Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about how to make your renders better in Blender. Some of these tips you may already know and others you may not have encountered before. I hope there is something useful for everyone and with that said, let's get started. This project started on BlenderSwap, which is a website where people upload Blender projects which you can download for free. However, they do have a subscription plan if you would like to support the site. I will leave a link for the site in the description. I wanted to download a project from BlenderSwap and then try to improve it myself. In that way, show you my process and some great tips and tricks. I found a project titled Abandoned Robot, which I thought looked cool. The first thing I want to do is analyze the original render and then look after things I can improve. Then I will show you my own render and how I made it. Let's go. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to Valid who made this awesome robot and uploaded it to BlenderSwap. It's an awesome robot and it's an awesome render. Now let's get started. The first improvement I would make is concerning the lighting. The light should help you tell the story in your render, and in this render, unfortunately, I don't think it works. The light clearly comes mostly from the right, but there's also light coming from the left and from the top. The setting looks like it's supposed to be some sort of basement or warehouse, so it seems like pretty much light to have in such a place. The lighting setup that is used looks more like studio lighting, so it kinda looks like the robot is on a photo shoot, which I don't think is the intention. In this case, I would definitely have matched the light more to the scene around my subject. This brings us to the next improvement, which is actually the most important point, the story. No one bothers to spend more than a second of their time on your render if you have nothing to tell. A good render makes you think, wonder, imagine, or maybe it just looks so freaking good that no one can take their eyes off it. The title of this project is Abandoned Robot, and I certainly do not feel that there is much to suggest that it is an abandoned robot. The background looks like a cold and dark basement, but due to the light, the foreground looks like a cozy waiting area with popcorn where the robot beautifully sits on a chair. As a viewer, I get confused and I can't read the situation of the image. It looks more like the robot is a piece of history that is for display due to the lighting. But hey, that's just my opinion. The next improvement is regarding the focus. Right now, the whole robot is actually the focus, which makes good sense as it is probably the intention to show all the great modeling work. However, this is actually a mistake. We do not want to see the whole model just to see it. We want to see how cool it can be and how bold a story it can tell. It is important to be prepared to kill your darlings, which means you have to decide which parts of the model you don't want to show in order to add extra shine to the parts that you do want to show. From personal experience, this can actually be quite a difficult task. It's actually a good exercise to download a model that someone else has made, where you have no feelings invested, and thereby you can set the light and the setting perfectly. The last improvement is realism, and I don't want to go too much into that as it does not look like the intention was for the render to look realistic, but I will name a few points. The floor lacks displacement. Right now the ground plane is pretty flat. The chair could use some imperfection as it looks pretty clean. This could be in the form of damage or dust or something like that. The dust that flies around in the air emits light, as their material is probably an emission shader, which is not very realistic either. And it looks like the robot looks just a little too shiny, so it's probably something with the specular value. And with that said, let's take a look at my render. Please let me know if you think I improved it or made it worse. Just let me know in the comments like you always do. Let's take a look at how I made this render. The only thing I wanted to bring to my own project was the model of the robot. So I started by drawing a quick concept that matched the original story of an abandoned robot. I thought it could be cool if it looked like the robot had fallen and frozen into the ice. As you can see from my finished image, I did not stick 100% to my concept art, which is perfectly fine. After all, it's just a guide. If we open up the original project, this is what it looks like. At the moment the robot consists of different parts, but we want this to be one single mesh. So the first thing I did was just to select all the different objects and press Ctrl J to join it into one single object. Then I copied the robot over to a brand new project and created a ground plane. I then pressed Shift A and added in an armature. I knew that I wanted to pose my model and to do that I created a simple rig. Since this rig is not going to be used for animation, I didn't want to waste too much time creating the rig. If you're only creating a rig for posing purposes, you shouldn't waste that much time. And after zero effort I got a rig and it worked perfectly fine. I then set the render settings to 1500 by 1500 and started posing my model. I tried to match my concept art as best as I could, which was pretty straightforward. To ensure that I have control over the composition, I always select the camera, go under viewport display and choose composition guides. From here you can choose everything from rule of thirds, golden ratio and other tools to help you with the composition. If I jump over to cycles there is not much going on and this is because I haven't added any light. So I jumped over to HDRI Haven and grabbed an HDRI. 
Under the shading tab, you can choose world mode. From here, you can change the position and rotation of the HDRI. With the ground plane selected, I created a new material. I deleted the principal shader, pressed Shift A and added in a glass shader. I also added in a geometry node, a noise texture and a bump node. By changing the scale of the noise, I can create larger or smaller chunks of ice. A higher value result in smaller chunks of ice, and a lower value creates big chunks of ice. I found that 8.5 worked great for my scene. At the moment it looks like the ice is white. This is because we can see right through the ice, and it is therefore the snow from our HDRI that makes the ice white. To make it look like water under the ice, I added in a circle which I placed under the ice, and gave it a simple blue color. I then spent some time placing the circle, so it looked like some places were more frozen than others. With the robot selected, I created a new material, which I renamed Ice. I deleted the principal shader and made a glass shader. I changed the IOR to 0.3 and that was it for that material. With the robot still selected, I created a particle system. I changed it from emitter to hair. At the moment the particles are displaying the robot's main material. That's why they have this funky color. So I changed the material that the particles are using to the ice material that we just created. Then I played around with the particle settings for a while to get the look that I wanted. A good way to make a realistic render is by imagining the story behind the image. The robot has been in the ice for a long time, so it makes sense that it has icicles on its body. With this mindset, you can easier integrate elements into your scene. Let's say this was a desert scene. Then I would have added sand to the robot, and probably also some sun damage to the texture. This is because I imagined what would happen to the robot if it was in this kind of environment for a longer period of time. This whole mindset thing might sound like a complete no-brainer, but way too often I see people throwing a completely clean model into an environment and not spending any energy on the integration. And it's a shame, because it's really a place where a lot of realism disappears. So with the particle system done, this is what we got. And that doesn't look half bad if you ask me. Then I quickly corrected the eye material and changed it to a principal shader with a transparent and glassy look. For the eyes of the robot, I made two spheres with an emission shader. I gave them a blue color and called it a day. I then made a new ground plane, which I scaled up, subdivided and removed unnecessary geometry. With proportional editing, I gave the plane a curvy edge. I then added a displacement modifier and changed the texture to distorted noise. I set the strength of the displacement modifier to 0.03. The material for this plane was very simple. In addition to the default principal shader, I added a bump node, a noise node, and a geometry node. I set the noise scale to 2.5, and then played around with the specular and the roughness value of the principal shader. I then jumped over to the camera view to evaluate my scene so far. I thought something was missing in the foreground, and that was when I came up with the idea of breaking off the robot hand holding a donut. Well, this wasn't rocket science, I just duplicated the arm and positioned it in the front. I'm not going to explain how I made the donut. If you know how to use Blender, then you all also know how to make a donut. Thank you, Andrew. I placed a donut where I thought it looked cool and then I duplicated it. I scaled up the new donut and gave it an ice material. I did this so the original donut appeared to be covered in ice. Then I thought it would look cool if there were some leaves lying around the ice. Nature is chaos, so if you want one word that describes a good realistic render, then that is variation. Variation is key to realistic renders. And right now the ice looks pretty digital and monotone. So to break that ice up, I thought the leaves would do a perfect job. And I added the leaves by throwing them into a collection. I then gave the ground plane a particle system where I set the render output to the collection with the leaves. The particle settings were pretty straightforward. Just some random scale and some random rotation. You can't really do anything wrong, it just has to be random. If you don't know how to make leaves, then here is a quick recipe. Find an image online of a leaf with a transparent background, or make it yourself. In Blender you can make a new plane. In the shading tab, create a new material. You can then drag and drop your leaf image. Then you just have to connect the color and the alpha output of your leaf image to the principal shader. And if we jump over to cycles, we can see the beautiful result. You can also see it in the preview mode, but then you have to change the blend mode of your material to alpha hashed or alpha clip. For the material, you want to increase the transmission because you want light to pass through the leaf. Right now, the leaf looks pretty flat. To fix this, you can subdivide the plane a couple of times, and with proportional editing, you can give the plane some shape. You can then duplicate it and give it another shape, and even change the color by adding in a saturation and hue node to the color, and then change the hue. Put all the leaves into a collection, and you're all done. I then added a box, which I scaled up so it covered my entire scene. I then jumped into shading mode and gave it a new material. I deleted the principal shader and added in a principal volume, which I connected to the volume socket of the material output, which is very important. I set the density to 0.03. The addition 
traditional light setup was pretty simple. It was just some area lamps which I placed all around the robot. I gave all the lamps a blue tint and set the power quite low, so they didn't take over the light from my HDRI too much. In the viewport layer properties, I enabled the mist pass and the denoising data. I then jumped over to the compositing tab. I connected a denoising node and a glare node. I set the glare node to fog low because I thought it looked awesome. I then added a color ramp and a mix node. I connected the color ramp to the mist pass. I know I'm jumping pretty fast through compositing, but that is because I've covered it pretty thoroughly in my landscape tutorials, which I think you should check out if you're a beginner to Blender. If you change the white color of the color ramp, then you can change the transparency of the mist pass. If you make it darker, then you make it more transparent. The mist pass almost instantly makes your render look more cool. However, it can also instantly make it look more unrealistic, and I'll tell you why. The mist pass does not affect the light in your scene, as it is a layer you add as an effect. I have made an extreme example where I have turned up the light completely in my scene, and when I add the mist pass, it looks like there's fog in my scene, but it is insanely unrealistic. My shadows are still wildly sharp, and my reflections are perfectly clear. This would not be the case if it was a foggy and cloudy day. Therefore, you should be careful about using the mist pass, and only use it to a degree that matches your scene. I then did the final positioning with my camera and made the final render. My final render settings was 3000 by 3000 and I used 2000 samples. I rendered out a light image and a dark image, which I combined before I did the final grade. Personally, I loved how this turned out, but let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.